Hello everyone, we're out here again in uh, Parque Sucre, the center of Rio Mamba. And uh, today, we're actually gonna go check out uh, a railway station that's nearby here. It's an old historical railway station and uh, we wanna talk about the, uh, the rise and fall of the railway here in Ecuador. So come along for that. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So we're here in Plaza Alfaro, Plaza Alfaro, which is named after former president of Ecuador, Eloy Alfaro. And Eloy Alfaro, he was president of Ecuador in the late 1800s. And the, the railway station, the old railway station, is right here in Plaza Alfaro. And it's named after Alfaro because he was probably, well, I mean, you know, aside from the thousands of foreign workers from like Jamaica and Puerto Rico who came here to build the railroad between uh, Quito and Guayaquil, and you know, the hundreds of them that died while they were doing it, uh, Alfaro is probably the most important uh, single person to the creation of the railway here in Ecuador. It was his, like, his brainchild, his baby. He really wanted to create a modern railway. You can see the track going up that way to the north. This, uh, this rail actually, I mean, not anymore, but when it was in its heyday, the rail would run all the way up north here, all the way to Quito. And um, the, the railway station here there's actually a museum I want to try and check out. I want to see if it's open. Now, I don't know if it's going to be open today because today is actually May 24th, uh, which is a very important holiday here in Ecuador. It is the anniversary of the Battle of Pinchicha, which is like the decisive battle during the Ecuadorian War of Independence from the Spanish. This is actually the 102nd anniversary. Uh, the battle was May 24th, 1822 up uh, in Pinchicha which is like a volcano uh, up just outside of Quito and uh, actually spoiler alert Quito is the next city we're going to be visiting after Rio Bamba so we'll be there soon and we'll definitely do a whole video about the Battle of Pinchicha and um, and a little more on Ecuador independence we already did one video on Ecuador independence from when we were in uh, Cuenca, but the story is, uh, is, is very interesting and there's definitely more to be told. So when we're in Quito, we'll be doing that. But for now, I kind of want to go over here, see the old train station and see if we can get into the museum and then maybe talk a little bit more about the railway because the railway sort of came to being and was very prosperous for many, many decades during the 20th century but then sort of uh, fell off and uh, fell into disrepair. And there's a whole story behind that as well and we wanna talk about that. So let's go over here to the train station and see if we can uh, see if we can get inside, see what we can see, and maybe see if we can like, uh, uh, see if we can get into the museum too. So we're in the old train station here, end of the line right here. And the train station itself actually, now that it's no longer uh, functioning as a train station, has uh, been turned into like a little uh, artisan market. People have like paintings, arts and crafts stuff. If we go inside we can see all the, uh, all the stuff that people are selling. It's a nice little, uh, nice little spot. You can buy souvenirs if you'd like. Uh, but really, what we like to find, what we really like to find, is the museum, which I think is like right around the corner here. Maybe there's a building over here also, and maybe that's where the museum is. Like back here, yeah. I wonder what this is back here. This may be the museum. Hopefully. 
If it is a museum over here, it's probably pretty small. It doesn't look like the building is very big. This building over here looks like it's under construction. So that, I'm guessing, is not it. And it may also be, to be honest, like it may be in another place. Because like if you go further up the line here, uh, to the north, there's actually a place, another plaza, where there's like an old train engine that we're going to go see, definitely. Um, I want to go see that too, but that may be where the museum is and not here. I'm not sure. But looking around here, doesn't look like, doesn't look like this is the spot. All right, let's keep exploring. We're going to follow the train line and we're going to see what we see along the way. Maybe the museum is further up. The cool thing about Rio Bamba is it's such a small city that like you can probably walk. I mean, you could literally probably walk from one end of the city to the other in like an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. Like it's a really small city. It's really easy to walk around. Um, and of course, because it's up here in the mountains, the climate is always very, very pleasant for walking. It's never like super, super hot. Um, it gets really cold, of course, in the winter, but we're not here in the winter. So um, around now, like it's perfect, perfect weather for walking. And, um, you know, we've been here just for a very short time. We're really only here for like a quick stopover. But um, the weather has been a little, well, it's, it's been raining a lot. And uh, we haven't really had the opportunity to get out too much um, without getting like rained on, you know? Like we'll go out for, uh, we'll go out for like, I don't know, you know, an hour or two and then it'll start to rain. And uh, rain pretty heavily too. So I think today is supposed to be nice. It's supposed to be uh, pretty much like not raining all day. So maybe today's a good day to really go walking. We'll walk all the way up, follow the train tracks, and see what we can find. Along the way here, along the uh, railroad tracks, which just runs right through the middle of this street here, this is the Monumental Raul Davalos, which is actually a bullfight ring. And they actually used to do bullfighting here in Rio Bamba, from what I've read. Uh, but they stopped the practice. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long ago. But, um, yeah, they stopped doing it. And... Uh, you know, from an animal rights um, concern, that's probably a good thing. But from a like economy of tourism thing concern, that's uh, it's not a great thing. So I don't know exactly what they do here in the Monumental Raul Davalos if they have like concerts or other events here. But I do know that they've stopped uh, they've stopped bullfighting. Well, still haven't found the museum yet, but we followed the track, and there is the old. Uh, train the locomotive right here next to the stadium this is like uh the soccer stadium right over here for rio bamba and here it is the train i want to go in here and film this train but really what i want to do is uh i want to ask these people that are up here that are like taking pictures on the train if they know where the museum is they may know so we'll get some footage of the train and uh We'll also ask these people if they know where the museum is. People in Ecuador are like super, super friendly. It's one of the things that I really love about this country um, for the time that I've been here. So uh, I feel super comfortable going up to people and just like asking them, hey, like, do you know where this thing is? So let's do that. Super cool old train. I don't know how old this train is. I don't know much about trains. Look, I, we've done some uh, some nerdy videos here. Like we did a nerdy video on like military historical artifacts from Peru. We did a nerdy video on uh, airplanes from uh, Chile. But uh, I don't know much about trains. I'm not a train nerd. But maybe there are some train nerds out there who could tell me exactly like how old this steam engine is and uh, you know what type it is. Anyway, it, it's Ferrocarriles Ecuatorianos. Ferrocarriles means, uh, of course, like railway. Let's go check it out. I think we can go up inside this thing. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure we can. There's a little kid up on top ringing the bell. If he can go up there, we can go up there, right? Maybe. Let's see. Let's see if we can go up here. Is that going to break? Possibly. It might break. Wow, okay, well. 
Looks like there may be some people living in there. The door's welded shut. Can't go in there. Let's go back down. Still super cool. Let's go around. See what we can see over here. Super cool old trains. Like I said, not not much of a train there myself, but it is cool to see. Any of this old stuff is cool to see, right? Yeah, doors welded shut here too. Somebody got inside there though. I'm gonna ask these people if they know where the museum is. Okay, so I asked them they said the museum is actually back at the station where we were and that uh, that maybe it's just not open I don't know we're gonna go back I didn't take a, uh, a good enough look around there so we're gonna head back that way anyway um, so when we go on our way back we'll we'll take a look around there but before we do let's take a look at this train let's see if we can climb up inside this thing Super cool. Yo, this thing is so cool. Let's see if we can get. I think they just climbed. They, they just climbed up on the front. Maybe we can climb up the same way. Ooh, cool, we can go up here. Let's go. So there's a boiler. Okay, so then they would like put coal, I guess, in here. What does this say here? Oh, I guess this is where they would have information about when it was built. I don't know. This is so cool. How would they drive this thing? I mean, I guess you just make it go, right? Put coal in there and it goes. That's a brake to make it stop. You don't really have to steer it because just like the tracks steer it, right? Well, now let's climb back down. Cool, the Baldwin Locomotive Works, Philadelphia, USA. There you go, there's some more information. Built in the United States, Philadelphia, USA. And then clearly sold to, uh, to Ecuador to run along their railroads. This is really cool. You know what, while we're here, and we're walking around this awesome old, old, rail carriage and locomotive and it's really nice too because there's like a nice little landscaped park around this thing it's not just like dumped out in the middle of nowhere it's a nice park anyway we can talk a little bit more about the uh the railway so like like i said alfaro eloy alfaro president of uh former president of ecuador had the uh, idea to build the railroad now it's not like really that far distance wise from Quito to Guayaquil. It's only like a couple hundred kilometers, but uh, Guayaquil is down at sea level. It's a port over on the uh, uh, Pacific Ocean. And uh, Quito is like way, way up in the mountains. Quito is like almost 10,000 feet up. It's like 2,800 meters up. So, and in between Guayaquil and Quito, there's all kinds of mountains and like ravines in the Andes, crazy like rivers running through there, all kinds of trouble basically if you're trying to build um, like rail lines through there, right? So basically they brought a bunch of foreign workers in thousands of them from, uh, from Puerto Rico and Jamaica mostly. And a lot of them died, I mentioned. Um, you know, like a lot of, a lot of them died during the construction because it's very very dangerous it's very like 
arduous um, task to build a railway going up through the mountains like that. And there's some places along the railway, like there's a place south of Riobamba here, near two towns, Siambe and uh, Al Aloase. Aloase. Anyway, there's a place called Nariz del Diablo, the nose of the devil, the devil's nose. And uh, it's this like big, um, I don't know, it's like a big mountain sort of that the railway runs around. And it actually, over the course of just like a few kilometers, maybe like 10, 12 kilometers, the railway, like the, the height goes, you know, 500 meters, almost an entire kilometer. So it's like a big climb, you know, or descent, depending on which way you're going on the railway. And that actually part of the railway was like super popular with tourists. And up until maybe like five years ago, it was still, there was a tourist train route where you'd go on like an old train, kind of like this, not like this old, but like an older train, historically preserved, and take that route as like a tourist thing that you could do. But unfortunately, since the uh, pandemic, it's been closed down. And in fact, all the railway, all the railways in Ecuador have been sort of temporarily closed since the pandemic. Now they say the temporarily closed, who knows if they're ever going to open up again because to be honest one of the reasons why the railway sort of um like the decline of the railway in the 1990s was because there just really wasn't a demand for it they had built a lot of roads um in different routes from guayaquil up to um to quito or from like cuenca where we were up to quito and you just didn't need the train anymore. There wasn't enough demand for it. And when there's not enough demand for the service for like cargo or passengers, then there's just not enough money to support it, to keep it maintained and maintain all the tracks and the engines and all that. So in the 1990s, it really fell into disrepair. After decades of just being like, like prominently in service and moving cargo from the port in Guayaquil up here to the mountains and all the little towns along here, um, along the railway and cities like Rio Bamba like this really benefited from having the railroad come through um, it benefited the economy and now actually in, in 2008 um, President uh, Correa right Ra Rafael Correa he actually sort of reinvigorated the railway and put a lot of money his administration put a lot of money into um, uh, rebuilding a lot of the tracks in a lot of areas and but unfortunately like I mentioned with the pandemic a lot of that has now fallen back into disrepair because of uh, you know they just stopped using them and there's there hasn't been a lot of maintenance on them and the tourist spots where the old railroad would still run like uh, Nariz del Diablo the devil's nose they unfortunately aren't running anymore it's something that I really wanted to do uh, while I was here because from Rio Bamba, you used to be able to, this is like five years ago though, you used to be able to catch a train and go all the way down to Al Oasi, Al Al um, I can't, I can't remember exactly how to pronounce the town, but like just south of here where the Devil's Nose was, you could take a train that would go down that way and then you'd loop around the Devil's Nose and get to see it. They actually used to uh, let you ride on top of the train cars. Tourists would be able to sit up on top of these train cars like this. He'd get an awesome view. But I guess back in like 2007, 2008, sometime back then, like three tourists, I don't know, they fell off and died. And then they, you're not allowed to do that anymore. So nobody, nobody gets to have any fun, not anymore. But let's go back uh, down towards the station here and we'll see if we can find that museum. Maybe, maybe it's there and we just missed it. Really kind of cool along the railway here. There's this little like walking path, like a little park. You know, a little landscaped flowers and trees. It's nice. We get to walk the right of way. I do know that. That's the one nerdy train thing that I know. Walking the right of way. I don't know if that's true or not. Like if that's like a real thing or not, but I don't know. It's from a movie. This really good movie from back in like the early 2000s called uh, The Station Agent with uh, Peter Dinklage, the actor who played uh, Tyrion Lannister. 
and Game of Thrones. Anyway, he's really into trains, his character in that movie, and him and his friends walk the right of way, like walking along the train tracks. Very relaxing. This is very relaxing, actually. Just to make sure we don't step, step in any dog poo or anything like that. But uh, walking the right of way. Station agent. I don't know if any of this is going to make it into the video. If it does, you guys should check out that movie. It's a real gem. You can see up here the sign, El Ferrocarril Más Difícil del Mundo, Estación Rio Bamba. Right? Uh, the most difficult railway in the world. And uh, when it was built, back in the, uh, like around the turn of the century, the late 1800s and the early 1900s, it was the most difficult railway, like, uh, the most difficult railway project in the world because of having to build all the way up through the Andes from all the way down at sea level, across the mountains and through all the rivers. So, very cool. Well, I think we got the final verdict and unfortunately, uh, someone, a nice gentleman inside the uh, market there told me that this, actually right here, behind the caution tape, used to be the train museum and it's no longer open. And I think actually like in here, there's a uh, Tren, Tren Ecuador Servicio al Cliente. This is like the customer service where it would have been for the Ecuador trains. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I think since the, uh, the entire train service has been shut down, um, you know, was shut down maybe like five years ago or so, it looks like the museum was shut down along with it. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see inside a train museum either. But it's too bad really, like, uh, not being able to take the train anymore. It would be so cool to be able to like come to a station like this, you know? hop on a train and take like a like a long distance train ride right maybe like an overnight train with a sleeper car man that'd be so cool I've always wanted to do that to be honest and in the United States the problem is you can do stuff like that we have Amtrak in the United States which is like a uh, partially private partially government subsidized train company uh, unfortunately the uh, it's it's really expensive like insanely expensive to do and they're notorious for having like delays and maintenance issues because uh, Largely because the train tracks themselves are owned uh, All by like private railroad companies though the private railroad companies that like built the train lines way way back in the day They still own the train lines and Amtrak basically gets to run on them, but all of the freight trains for all of those train companies, they all get priority. So like there's tons of delays. Basically, if you wanted to take a long haul train in the United States from say like Chicago, where I'm from, out to like California, you know, it's a multi-day trip, but to get like a cabin where you have like your own cabin, like a sleeper cabin where you can like, you know, have your own space and whatnot, and be comfortable, it's super expensive. I don't know exactly how much it is. In fact, I'll check on their website and give you a current price for how much it costs, but it's really, really expensive, like prohibitively expensive. Way more expensive than flying, which is why everybody flies in the United States and nobody really takes the train unless they're like terrified of flying or they have a ton of money and they want to like take the train as like an experience. But I don't know. It would have been cool to be able to take the uh, a train here up through the Andes, um, you know, up around the devil's nose. But fortunately, we missed it by about about five years, I guess. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe in the future, they'll uh, they'll open it up again. They'll do some more maintenance on the tracks, and uh, and uh, they'll get it up and running again. Maybe we'll be able to come back here sometime in the future and actually ride the train up the devil's nose. But until that time. We're going to call it here for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll uh, see you in the next one.